Um, yeah, so this is my fourth cookbook, and it's a bit different to the other three. So the other three are all cookbooks, and they kind of focus on everyday healthy food, simple everyday healthy food. Um, this one focuses on that as well. Like there, there is over 100 recipes in this book. However, it's more than a cookbook. It's actually almost like a lifestyle book. So there's a lot of um, really good common sense, down-to-earth um, nutrition advice in the beginning, particularly for those people that want to lose weight. And in the back, there's a whole section on exercise too, with three different kind of levels of exercise plans, which was um, written by one of my good friends and fitness expert, Michael McCormick. So the, the whole, the reason I wrote this book, I guess, is it was in response to a lot of emails I'd had from people asking me to create them specific dietary plans to help them lose weight. People would email me saying, I love your recipes and I use them all the time, um, but I want to, can you please give me a specific eating plan using your recipes? These are the types of foods that I like and these are the foods that I dislike and this is how many people in my family and how many people I have to cook for and this is how much weight I want to lose. These are my current exercise levels. Can you do me up a plan that I can follow? Um, and I would do that, but it would take a lot of time to do that for each person. It takes six, seven, eight hours to do an individual plan for each person. And so one day I just thought, why don't I do a book on this um, and a book. That, so with this book, basically, you can create your own tailored eating plan um, that will fit in with your lifestyle and your taste buds. And no matter which breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks and desserts you choose from the book, it will all fit into a 1500 calorie a day meal plan to help you lose a bit of weight if you need to. And I have to say a lot of the recipes are easy to follow. I can show Very, you this because yeah. I took a few photos here. Oh, we made your banana pancakes wow. on oh, Saturday. Oh, good work. Right into it. Yeah. yeah. And I love that. So there we are with breakfast. This is my oh, youngest daughter. Oh, fantastic. She helped me make these. So that was pretty oh, straightforward. Great. What I found about really cool about this is that this is great for people uh, who, who can't take milk, for example, because the, the, um, the banana, when it's all squished up, is a mm. good substitute for that. And that never occurred to me. Yeah, these, um, those pancakes, they're basically, yeah. basically just banana and egg. So they're really light and fluffy yep. and very banana-y. Mm. But it makes them a lot healthier. You know, you're basically just eating some protein and some um, fruit. Um, and so a lot of the recipes in this book are gluten and or dairy free. Um, some people just find that they feel better mm. without too much of those things. They're not bad, those things aren't bad, but some people do feel better having a bit less of it. And they're interchangeable, so I could put, say, a whole meal, wheat germ, something like that in there Absolutely. as a different type of flour, just something that sticks with it. Yeah, definitely. Well, my kind of test is, is that I get a lot of cookbooks. Mm. Um, thanks to Rebecca here and others. Uh, and the first thing I do is, is I sit down and I say, if a child can make this, then I can make it. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that's a good test. Yeah, yeah so well, that's what I really loved about it. And, and one of the other things I loved about it is interchangeable. So mm. there's uh, the tikka masala, for example, is um, I'm not keen on cream, so we swapped it with yogurt and yep. things like this. So there, there's, uh, there's certain levels that you can go to if you know your flavor. Yeah. You know your flavors and your, and your, um, and your groups. And after a while, we get to know those things. And that's what I love about this, is certain repetition through it that, yep. that helps with that. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we had great fun. <laughs> yeah, good work. Uh, the, uh, what's the other one? We did your smoothies is one that, um, that cracks out in there, and the toasts is another one. Yep. So on first blush, you look at these and you think, ah, yeah, mm. How is that a recipe? But yeah. then you break it down, and, and that's what I really enjoyed about writing. It was like there's a certain number of calories in here, and I can mm. see how that would fit into a day. And a lot of the time, it's ideas. You know, a smoothie is a super easy thing to to make. Mm. And you're right. Sometimes you kind of think, why do I need a recipe for a smoothie? But you may have never thought of doing a raspberry apple and yogurt smoothie before, for example, or a peach coconut and blueberry one or something. So it's nice to have those kind of just simple ideas. Yeah, yeah that that was um, so that was a, a the revelation I. I guess was the toast one because we started there with with that and then it was like oh, what else could we try yeah, yeah. <laughs> avocado banana and marmite not a good choice <laughs> <laughs> some people might like that but mm, I don't know. and on those things I also found that uh, like every chef when they introduce uh, a cookbook likes to add an ingredient no one's heard of ah. so I've noticed there's a little trend there so uh, Simon Gould brought yep. me um, brought me um, triple A sauce yep oh, I love uh, or, or, or hickory which is yep. the other one so mm -hmm. all slow cooked meat I now do always mm. have that ingredient into yep. it. Um, other other ones, um, Jamie Oliver showed me um, 
from watching TV showed me how you can make rice out of cauliflower, yep. which is in yours as well. Yes. It's a bit of a trend for that sort yep. of thing. And now you've shown me chia. Ah, chia seed jam. Yeah, that yes. works really well. Um, it's quite amazing. You can make, um, I mean, usually jam you make with half fruit and half sugar, which is a lot of sugar, you know, if you're making jam. Um, yep. But it's amazing. You can thicken fruit with by using chia seeds and not having to add any sugar. What and is a chia seed? Chia seeds, um, well, it's a seed, obviously, they're really tiny, but they've got this very unique property in that when they're mixed with a liquid, they um, almost produce like a gelatinous texture, kind of like jelly. They kind of swell up. So you can... The way pectin does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much, exactly. Um, yeah, so they, they're really good to use, like, in, to create different textures, I guess, and thicken things up naturally without mm. having to... Add other types of thickeners. Yeah, that aren't as good. And they're, they're readily really available. Kind of, yeah, easy, easy to find now. That mm. um, you can find them in pretty much most food stores. Um, and they're also really high. I mean, same as most seeds, they've got a, you know quite a high kind of oil fat content, but high in omega threes as well. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah, I wish I'd known about this before I read the Sunday paper because I just made some rhubarb jam the night before. Oh, well, <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> you can make some more jam. <laughs> oh, there will be. The rhubarb's just going to keep growing. <laughs> it's one thing I've learned. My six-year-old loves rhubarb jam. She's got this cotton. She won't eat rhubarb, but she doesn't know that's rhubarb jam. Yeah. <laughs> so now I can try this one, which mm. is really cool. And this is a this is a recipe that lasts for about a week or so, yep. mm -hmm. as opposed to the jam, which just sits in the fridge forever. Yeah, yeah. So it's well, not my house, but to make it um, yeah. because it doesn't have all of that sugar in yeah. it which is used as a preservative for right. the jams it won't keep as long so you just make it fresh but basically it's just blending it together and pouring it into a jar that's mm. all you've got to do so yeah. you can make it fresh pretty easily at my food bag we've got a whole um, test kitchen and in total our team of chefs we now have about I think there's nine or ten of us so and that consists of different recipe developers recipe testers and second recipe testers, nutritionists and dietitians, all working together. Um, and we kind of brainstorm and come up with ideas together to get a nice variety throughout the week for our My Food Bag meals. Then they go into the development process and then they get tested by the second person and tested a third time by a home recipe tester as well to make sure they work perfectly. Um, but how do I kind of decide what is like a healthy food? It's definitely not about stripping um, taking things away, it's actually quite the opposite. Um, I like to flip that mindset on its head, I guess, and kind of get people to think about all the things they should be having every day, rather than the things that they shouldn't mm. be. So if it's, it's almost like if you have a mental checklist in your head that, that um, lists every day, I've got to have four to five thirds of vegetables, about two to three thirds of or pieces of fruit, um, two thirds of lean protein, and about three thirds of unprocessed carbohydrates. And you have that checklist in your head, and you try and tick it off every day. Your focus will be on that, and it will leave very little room for thinking about the things that you shouldn't be having so much of. So, so those more unhealthy things, the things that are high in fat and sugar and salt and everything. Um, so I'm always on the lookout for you know what I should should be eating rather than what I shouldn't be. Um, you know, I'll look for things that have lots of vegetables packed into them. And, and I love um, all of my, um, I guess you could call them like comfort foods. Like I love a good steak pie. absolutely love it to bits, you know, nice big chunks of meat and beautiful flaky puff pastry. But when I make those things, I will always add some spinach, some mushrooms, some carrots, onions, and all of those types of things into the pie to bulk it out with some goodness. Um, while I still get the flavour and everything as well. Yeah. It's interesting you bring up the pie one because I've been, um, I guess I've been watching um, a bit of food television lately, <laughs> uh, and there's uh, there's definitely a culture in America. That, I mean, there's a show called Man vs. Food, which mm -hmm. you may have seen. It's the most hideous thing I've ever seen. It's like he literally takes on the most ridiculous large portions of everything, and there's almost a, a culture as food as a sport, <laughs> which is a bit cringeworthy. But then you come from, um, originally your exposure comes from MasterChef and that's a sport in its sense. Yeah, I mean, I it's a skill sport, and it's a mindset sport, and it's an intelligent sport. So um, there's, a, there's a great quote about from the New York Times about, uh, about Americans are, um, are basically tuning in, turning off, and ordering out. Mm. So they're watching a lot of television, and they're 
watching a lot of food TV, but they're not necessarily cooking. Is that your experience in New Zealand, that we're kind no. of watching that stuff? Or no, no, actually yeah. quite the opposite, because I know that um, shows like MasterChef have um, really inspired people to get in the kitchen and try new things, particularly children. Um, I think children's been the big one. They see on TV that, you know, there's all these different interesting foods and, oh, the, you know, the cool kids are... Uh, cooking them and eating them on them on TV, um, so they're a lot more willing to give it a go, and it's spawning this whole generation um, of cooks who are interested in um, yeah, getting into the kitchen and trying new foods. I mean, there's so many cooking competitions at school now, um, and the kids are really mm. into it, and even I know amongst my group of friends, they've all started doing their own My Kitchen Rules and MasterChef competitions between them, where they go around to each other's houses, you know, and they have host have turns hosting a dinner party and they're putting all this effort into you know cooking a beautiful meal so it spawned a lot of interest from mm. what i've seen um which is really cool so what makes that different i mean maybe new zealanders we we come from the uh, the a&p shows and such where you know you took along your lamingtons and it was a competition of the best one so i know we have that tradition and then we have uh the allison holtz tradition where uh those that didn't know where it was shown and of course um originally a lot of our baking of course came from the flour company who promoted it in the first place because they wanted us to bake. Is it in our blood that we just want to, I think, want to cook? I think New Zealanders are very lucky in that we have a closer, more direct relationship to nature than most other people in the world. Um, we're very, very lucky and I hope we never lose it. We're very unique. I've travelled all around the world and I've lived overseas for many years as well and it's quite incredible. It's even quite hard to believe sometimes how disconnected people in other countries are from their food. They just have no idea. Whereas in New Zealand, you know, we're still very much a rural um, country. I mean, for example, my husband is a fourth generation sheep farmer. We really understand how meat gets no to your plate, yeah. basically, and he's mm. a hunter as well. Um, a lot of Kiwis have vegetable gardens, so, and we've got, and on top of having that direct connection to nature, um, we also are very lucky that we have very good quality produce too, much better quality than what a lot of the rest of the world um, gets. So I think naturally, kind of, just because we're in this environment, um, we are more into cooking than a lot of other countries are. So how's that offset though, you know, we're worried about obesity and the rate of that and things like that, is that because we just have too much or we are, is that a first world problem that we need to... Um, I think that's come down to convenience, I mean, all of the western world is, I guess you could say, theoretically getting busier, things are getting faster, there's more stimulation around now um, and it's squeezing less time out of the day to um, do um, normal house activities like cleaning and cooking and those types of things and so we're very convenience driven and um, people can then very easily fall into that trap of getting convenience foods and takeaways and um, falling into having processed foods. Yeah, which um, raises the point of that you've got my food bag, which is a concept I, I guess you started as sort of an alternative to, to takeaways to some degree. Um, yeah, well, so that my food bag was thing, that problem of time. My food bag was simply born out of the what's for dinner dilemma. It's it's become very clear that a lot of people see trying to think of what's for dinner and um, having to do the shopping and everything for it as a real chore and we wanted to take, we wanted to create a solution to that problem I guess but still ensure that people were actually going to cook, be involved in the cooking process. So my food bag yeah. basically, um, we come up with all the recipes and we deliver those recipes to your door with all the ingredients to cook those recipes with so that you don't have to think about what's for dinner, you don't have to go shopping for it, you don't have to buy a whole jar of something and then only use a little bit of it and waste the rest of it, um, you, you end up saving a lot of money, a lot of time and, um, and, and on food wastage as well. Yeah, but you still have to, at the end of the day, you still have to put the meal together, you still have to cook it, because mm. that's something that I very firmly believe um, is an important part of your health. You've kind of taken the fun out of it. <laughs> Market shopping is great. <laughs> oh, some people like it, but a lot of people don't. <laughs> I have to say, I'm, I don't enjoy the supermarkets 
I hate supermarket shopping. I like shopping I'll on agree the market with you there. on the yeah. weekend on the mm. weekends, but I'm often busy on the weekends and um they're only markets are only there on the weekend as well. They're not mm, there during the week too. So well, it's yeah. interesting, um the uh the idea of everything being fresh, I know for uh say to countries like France and Italy and some Asian countries, you do go shopping to the market every day and it's always there. Mm. Uh the supermarkets kind of ruined that for us to some degree, isn't it? Yeah, I guess they have. Yeah, I grew up in Asia for six, seven years and you've got wet markets where you can get very fresh produce every day and yeah, when I um, travel France, yeah, it's the same kind of thing. People do do their shopping at markets every day. Um, yeah, and it, it is a lot nicer than doing it at the supermarket. But. I've sort of noticed that with all these recipes and things, the, the one thing I want from a recipe, and maybe there's something to think about, is what do I do with my leftovers? Mm. And like for me, well, yeah, for me, I know what to do with them. Like, like, you know, anything, I strain off a fat or a stew or whatever, the extra liquid, and it's a soup, bang, yep. just like that, whatever. But uh, for some people, there's so much wastage. Yeah, well, if you, I guess if you're not a really resourceful cook or very confident, um, people don't know what to do with the leftovers. I mean, if you do something like my food bag, you don't have leftovers, which is one of the beautiful things about it. Um, yeah, but I guess it's just... You know, learning more skills and ideas and ways of how to use these leftovers. So, is there an opportunity, say, for with, with my food bag and with your recipes, to um, to look at them and, um, as I said, some of your recipes you can interchange, which I love the chicken tikka masala one, for example, mm. which uh, which which we made. We didn't have half the ingredients, but we had the spices, we had yep. those things, the core things, because they're dry, they stay in the fridge. Yeah. Uh, the chicken was was boned one, so we just. Yep. You know, cook that actually case nice with that. Mm. <laughs> um, and various things like that you can interchange, which which is great. Um, but then there's the on the my food bag one. I guess you can reuse the recipes. Yes. Does that help you also maybe to shop for those ingredients again? Um, I, I guess a lot of our customers, um, most of our customers get my food bag weekly. Um, a lot get it fortnightly, uh, but they reuse their favourite recipes on the weekends, which they'll have to go and source the ingredients for. Um, but because they've cooked that dish once or twice before, they're really confident with it. Um, so they often end up cooking it for like a dinner party because they know that they know what it's going to taste like. They know it's going to taste really good. They know it will impress their friends. Yeah. One of the things that just occurred to me as I was coming up here, you're on the road at the moment. Mm -hmm. So what are you eating? <laughs> yeah, well, we've been, because um, often a lot of people say it's when you're on the road that it's really hard to eat well. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily the, necessarily the case. Like, we've been going to the supermarket to get breakfast um, from there. So buying, a, I bought actually a suitcase. Half of my suitcase that I took from home um, was full of fruit. I had grapefruit, oranges, kiwi fruit, and bananas that I've brought with me, and little bags of um, nuts and dried fruit for snacks in the car and stuff. Um, and then we've just been buying um, like our breakfast, so egg, little bottles of yogurt, that kind of thing that sorts us out. And then it's all about your choices, what you're choosing from menus at places that you're eating. Like often, if I'm at a restaurant, I'll order, um, you know, if I'm on the road and I've been eating out a lot, I'll just get an entree and a side of vegetables. That's generally what I'd order, or like a soup and a side of vegetables. So it is still possible to eat pretty well.